This program from the annual Summer Music Festival at the Redlands Bowl is made possible by support from these Inland Empire civic-minded organizations concerned with the cultural life of our communities. The citizens of the Inland Empire that patronize the bowl and viewers like you supporting local public television in the Inland Empire. Thank you. Now he's rising and alone he's fit to fly, which we're bent on signalizing with unusual revel rise. He's the heart of Frederick's ventures, Frederick's out of his indentures. Pour a pour a pirate sherry, fill a fill a pirate glass, and to make us more than merry, let the pirate bubble pass. Hooray! <sighs> yes, Frederick. From today, you rank as a full-blown member of our band. Yeah. <laughs> my friends, I thank you all from my heart for your kindly wishes. Oh. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Well, today, I am out of my indentures. Yes. And today, I leave you forever. <gasps> but this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a cunada or cutting out a white star never shipped a handspike. Here, here. Ow. Yes, I, I have done my best for you. And why? It was my duty under my indentures. And I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter, the mistake was ours, not yours. And I was in honor bound by it. Well, an error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect on my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> when Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd apprentice him to some career seafaring. I was, alas, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind the promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. It's true. Right up in the world. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing. Mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy apprentice to a pirate. Oh! A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a violet. Hey! I bound him to a pirate, you. Instead of to a pilot. I soon found out, beyond all doubt, the scope of this disaster. 
But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your Shylot, no. which you wouldn't have found had he been born. Apprentice to a pilot. Oh, Frederick, I'm sorry. Oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. Rise, sweet one. I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were. They still are, though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. Oh. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. <sighs> oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor lad, lad. Poor, poor lad. <laughs> well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. Mm. We don't seem to make piracy pay. Samuel? Well, I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why. Oh? Yeah. But alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Oh, why not, my boy? It is only half past eleven, and you're one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True, and until then you are bound to protect our interests. Hear, hear! hear. Well, then... It is my duty, as a pirate, to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves, and when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. <laughs> then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. <laughs> 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 of course, we are orphans ourselves, and uh, know what it is. <laughs> yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Mm -hmm. hmm? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> the last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. Oh, I mean. <laughs> and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylum. Uh. <laughs> Which we know is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Mm. Well, there's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. <laughs> After 12, I wouldn't. Uh. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? Well, it's the top of the tide and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. Oh, when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. <laughs> Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. Oh. No, 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 Frederick. It cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. <laughs> no, Frederick, I shall live and die. A pirate king! <laughs> <laughs> Far to live and die under the brave black flag I fly, then play a sanctimonious part. The pirate had in a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you, where pirates all are well to do. But I'll be true to the song I sing, 
and live and die a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. <laughs> pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are the pirate king. And it is, it is. It's a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is the love of the pirate king, the love of the pirate king. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> When I sally forth to seek my prey, I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well-bred monarch ought to do. But many a king on a first-class throne. If he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through more dirty work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king. <laughs> And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are the love of the pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is the love of the pirate king. The love of the pirate I cannot live if I am left behind. <laughs> Ruth, I will be quite candid with you. You are very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. <sighs> a wife of 17? Uh, you will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I'm quite well. <laughs> I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear Master. Ah, oh, but lately. Oh no, years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I'm a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. Yes, I should be deceiving you if I told you oh. otherwise. Oh, thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I am sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if, I say if, you are really a fine woman, then your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Oh, Frederick. <gasps> Hark! Surely I hear voices. No, no, no. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Could it be the Department of Homeland Security? Yes. <laughs> no, it does not sound like Homeland Security. Oh, confusion! It is the voices of young girls. If he should see them, I am lost. <gasps> By all this marvelous, a bevy of beautiful maidens! Lost! 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 How lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them! What grace! What delicacy! What refinement! And Ruth? Ruth told me she was beautiful! Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master, am I not so? And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jot so. 
upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot soon. Your face is lined, your hair is gray. And gradually got so. Faithless woman, to deceive me, I who trusted so. Master, master, do not leave me. Hear me ere you go. Faithless woman. Master, master. Faithless woman. Master, master, faithless do not woman, leave me. To do not deceive me. me. I who trusted so. Go. Faithless master, woman, to deceive me. me. I who trusted so. My love, without reflecting, oh, do not be rejecting. Take a maiden tender for affection, raw and green, at very highest rating. Has been accumulating summer seventeen, summer seventeen. Don't yes, be loved, master. Crush me with disaster. What is such a comfortable fervid? It is clear. My love on a painting has been accumulating thirty-seven years. Forty-seven years. Forty-seven years. Faithless woman to deceive me, I who trusted so. Faithless woman to deceive me, I who trusted. What shall I do before these gentle maidens I are not show in this alarming costume? No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. What a picturesque spot. I wonder where we are. We are quite alone, and the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes <laughs> and stockings and paddle. Stop, ladies, pray. Amen. I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir? Speak. I am a pirate. A pirate? Horror! Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, O oh blushing bonds of ever blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty. How pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty. Poor wandering one, though thou hast surely strayed, take heart of grace. Steps retreats, oh, wandering one. Poor wandering one, if such poor love as mine can help thee find true peace of mind, why take it? It is thine. <laughs> 
not lose our senses. Men who stick at no offenses will anon be here. Piracy, the dreadful trade is. Pray you get you hence, young ladies, while the coast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, to me. <laughs> Pirate caravans proceed against our will to wed us all. Just bear in mind that we are wards in chancery, and father is a major general. We pit top pause, or danger may be fall. A father is a major general. Yes, yes, he is a major general. Yes, yes, I am a major general. Hello. <laughs> For he is a major general. He is a major, major general. general. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a major general. It, it is, is a lovely major, major general, a lovely major general. <laughs> I am the very, uh, what, 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 uh, 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 maestro, yes. I am the very model of a modern major general, like information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fight historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. <laughs> I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand the equations both the symbol and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. Lot of news. Lot of news. Lot of news. Lot. Ah! With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. 
I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings, animalculus. In short and matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In short and matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. I know our mythic history, King Arthur's and Sir Caradox. I answer hard acrostics, I have a pretty taste of paradox. I quote an elegiacs are the crimes of Heliogabalus. In conics, I can floor peculiarities parabolous. <laughs> I can tell undoubted Raphael's from Jared Elson's Ophanies. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's din of four. Din of four? Good heavens, I'll, I'll never think of a rhyme for din of four. What, never? Well, hardly ever. Uh. Ah, and whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense pinafore. Ahoy there! Then I can write a washing bill in Babylonic cuneiform and tell you every detail of Caractacus's uniform. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. In fact, when I know what is meant by Mamelon and Ravelin, when I can tell at sight a mouse a rifle from a javelin. Uh, oh, Papa, it's the other way around. What, what, what? Oh. When such affairs as sorties and surprises <gasps> I'm more wary at. And when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat. Oh. When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy. Oh, dear. Strategy. Uh, batigy, datigy, catigy, fa fatigy. That's not a word. Yes, yes, Mabel. What, 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 what? Yes. Are you quite sure? Mm -hmm. Can you use it in a sentence? Um, uh, never mind, we haven't time, dear. Uh, uh, you'll say that a major general has never said to you. You'll say that a major general has never said to you. You'll say that a major general has never said to you. You'll say that a major general has never said to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventurous, it's only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. It's still in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. Oh. Ha! Bravo! Oh. You're good. Now that I've introduce myself. I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, Papa, uh, will we... Permit me. I'll explain in two words. We propose to marry your daughters. Uh, Dear me. Against our wills, Papa. Against our wills. No, but you mustn't do that. Oh, yeah. uh, this is a picturesque uniform, but I, I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. Yes, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Don't believe them, Papa. They are pirates. <gasps> the famous pirates of Penzance. The pirates of Penzance. I've often heard of them. Uh. All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today, and who means to lead a blameless life Evermore. Wait a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. Oh, well, we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. Well, but we waive that point. <laughs> we do not press it. We look over it. <laughs> ah, an idea. And do you mean to say that you would deliberately rob me of these? These, the sole remaining props of me old age, and leave me to go through the remainder of my life, unfriended, unprotected, and uh, uh, alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? <gasps> oh, does it all! <laughs> We are again. I ask you, 
Have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan. <laughs> I don't think we quite understand one another. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. Mm -hmm. Now, as I understand you, you're merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Oh, pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it. But not orphan. Stop. <laughs> I think I can see where we're getting confused. Oh. <laughs> when you said orphan, did you mean orphan? A person who's lost his parents? Oh. <laughs> or orphan frequently? <laughs> hmm? Oh, I beg pardon. I see what you mean. <laughs> frequently. <laughs> you said orphan frequently. <laughs> no, only once. Exactly! You said often, frequently, only once! I'm telling a terrible story, but it doesn't diminish my glory. But they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters if I hadn't in elegant diction indulged in an innocent fiction which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. If he's telling a terrible story, shall I tell it his glory? It's one of the coolest sources ever in the billowy waters. It is easy in elegant diction. The scene now shifts to the Major General's estate, where the Major General sits brooding upon his deception of the pirate. But, Papa, why do you sit night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? Why do I sit here? Why do I sit here? <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, to escape from the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I'm no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family escutcheon. <laughs> but you forget, Papa, you only bought the property a year ago and the stucco on your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Mabel, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant, by purchase, should have brought disgrace upon what I have no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. <laughs> now for the pirate's lair. Oh, joy unbounded, oh, sweet relief, oh, rapture unexampled, at last I may atone in some slight measure for the repeated acts of theft and pillage, of which, at sense of duty's stern dictation, I, circumstances victim, have been guilty. Young Frederick, who calls your late commander, and I, your little Ruth. Oh, mad intruders, how dare ye face me? Know ye not, oh, rash ones, that I have doomed you to extermination? Have mercy on us. Hear us ere you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet mercy should alloy our stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. Say on. No, 
already forgot something. And no! <laughs> when you had left a pirate fold, we tried to raise our spirits faint, according to a custom mold, with quips and quibbles quaint. But all in vain the quips we heard, we lay and sobbed upon the rocks. Until to somebody occurred a startling paradox. A paradox. A paradox, a most ingenious paradox. We've quips and quibbles heard in flocks, but none to beat this paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. This paradox. <laughs> Your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer. And with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we've risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox. It's a paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles heard in flux, but none to beat that paradox. Paradox, a paradox, a misingenuous paradox. That's paradox. <laughs> For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I've no desire to be disloyal, some person in authority. Who? I don't know who. Very likely the astronomer royal has decided that. Although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty. One year in every four, his day should be reckoned as nine and 20. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. <laughs> you are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet we go by birthdays, you're only five. <laughs> and a little bit over. <laughs> See, yes, yes, with yours, my figures do agree. <laughs> <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox! At common sense, she gaily mocks. Though counting in the usual way, yes, 21, I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. A paradox, a curious paradox. This is most curious, most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. <laughs> you are glad now I'll be bound that you spared us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you had killed two of your comrades. My comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us until... Until I reached my 21st year. No. Until you reached your 21st year. Birthday. And uh, going by birthdays, yours yet? Only five and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Oh, I know. <laughs> you don't mean to say you're going to hold me to that. No. Oh. We merely remind you of the fact <laughs> and leave the rest to your sense of duty. <gasps> your sense of duty. Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, 
be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty. Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. Yes. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I had ever been mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I will do my du my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. <sighs> oh, horror! What's, What's the, the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I cannot do it. And yet, as one of your band... Speak out. I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley. Yes. The father of my Mabel. Yes. 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 He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did. It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore, but as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you. Yes. That General Stanley. Yes. Yes. Is no orphan. What? what? More than that, he never was one. I can't breathe. <laughs> um, am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice on our credulous simplicity? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, our revenge shall be swift and terrible. Yes. We'll collect our band and attack Tremorin Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word. He is doomed. <laughs> away, away. My heart's on fire. I burn the space to steps to do repay. This very night, my vengeance tower shall glut itself and go away, away. Away, away, ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire. It strikes me to the core, away, away. With falsehood pal, he tricked us on our bright. Let vengeance how the pirate so decides. On nature stern, he softened with his lies. And in return, tonight, the train to dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will water in sorrow. The ones of spot. In their natures they cherish. And all who blot. To abuse it shall perish. Tonight he dies. It's early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will water in sorrow. The ones of spot in their natures they cherish. And all who plot to abuse it shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. Away, away, tonight, 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 the traitor dies tonight. Oh. has just been made. Mabel, my dearly loved one, I bound myself to serve the pirate captain until I reached my one and twentieth birthday. But you are twenty-one. I've just discovered that I was born in leap year. And that birthday will not be reached by me till 1940. Oh, horrible, 
catastrophe appalling. And so, farewell. No, no. I quit these walls, the thought my soul appalls, but when stern duty calls, I must obey. Stay, Frederick, stay. Nay, Mabel, nay. We have no claim. But duty's name no but shot. My soul appalls, but when stern duty calls, stay, Frederick, stay. I must obey. Must I leave thee here in endless night to dream Where joy is dark and drear And sorrow all supreme When nature day by day In 1940, I of age shall be. I'll then return and claim you. I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you'll be true to me. Yes, I'll be strong. By all the Stanleys dead and gone, I swear it. Oh, 
it is love, and it is truth, and it is good for joyous laughter. She will be faithful to her sooth, to be a red and even after. For here is love, and here is truth. For oh, here is love, and here is truth. She will be faithful to her sooth, to be a red and even after. And even after. And even after. Yes, even after. Oh, here is love, and here is truth, and here is good for joyous laughter. She will be faithful to her sooth. On the man approaching, with stealthy steps the pirates are approaching. We are not a little bit of a penalty. We with stealthy stride. Our obvious course is now to hide. <laughs> Name. Will 
at once with humble mien, because with all our faults we love our queen. Yes, yes, with all the faults we love the queen. Yes, yes, with all the faults we. them and place them at the bar. Right. One moment. Let me tell you who they are. They are no members of the common throng. They are all noblemen who have gone wrong. They are all noblemen who have gone wrong. <laughs> No Englishman unmoved that statement hears, because with all their faults we love our house of peers. <laughs> I pray you pardon me, expired king. Peers will be peers, and youth will have its bling. Resume your ranks and legislative duties, and take my daughters. All of whom are beauties. <laughs> oh, wandering ones, though ye have surely strayed, take heart of grace, your steps retrace. Poor wandering ones, poor wandering ones, if such poor love as This program is made possible by support from these Inland Empire civic-minded organizations concerned with the cultural life of our communities, the citizens that patronize the bowl, and viewers like you supporting local public television in the Inland Empire. Thank you.